I feel it's wrong that if people are paying for advice that they perceive is from a legal person, then that person should surely hold legal qualifications. Will writing in the UK is uh, is unregulated, so it's like the Wild West at times. You well, can completely, start, yeah, yeah. You can start a will writing business tomorrow, uh, having been in prison for the last five years, because there's no law in place. So I, I've been very fortunate during the years. I, I've sat on the Legal Services Board in London, where we investigated this. Uh, I'm chair of the Best Foundation, which is a you know a new succession planning sort of organisation that looks to to raise standards. Uh, we, as a firm, you know, our people giving advice are step qualified. Now, step is the Society of Trust and State Practitioners. It's a global qualification. So if somebody's got TEP after their names, they are the best, you know. Uh, we've got an apprentice that started with us nine years ago. She's just qualified. So to go from an apprentice to become gold worldwide standard is amazing. I'm so proud of her. Uh but that's the, the standard we want. We won't let anyone in front of a client that's not got any qualification. What, what's that all about? But we don't have to have people with qualifications. Anyone can give the advice. you just got to make sure you've got the right professional indemnity insurance to cover up the mistakes that they're highly likely to make. You know? So we always say, we have a joke about it, you know, in terms of nationally amongst people who are the same level as us, where uh, you can be a window cleaner in the afternoon and then go and advise someone on their £2 million estate in the evening and because you've got legal in your name or something, they, the public are unaware. Oh, I, so never, I never knew it's that. It's awful. That's terrifying me. I had no idea either. The things to look it. for, honestly, are things like... But I don't think people know that in general. No, they like, don't. They don't know they that don't. because you would never think that that would be unregulated. Mm. No. Something so important would be unregulated. Yeah. So there's reserved activities in law, uh, like drawing up legal instruments, uh, you know, trust deeds, uh, things like probate and uh, obviously conveyance, you know, all those sorts of things. So... Only qualified lawyers can carry those out. Things like wills, because you can write your own will, you know, it's, it's unregulated, isn't it? You're doing your own thing. You're not, you're not a qualified lawyer. But we always say to people, look, look for a few things. You know, one of the things is if you see someone with TEP after their name, trust and estates practitioner, they are the best. They are gold standard. And step are trying to get that message out to the public. But it's a hard sell because some people just want cheap and nasty. Then, you know, certainly solicitors who are specialists in this field, so they've got their law degree, they don't always do a, a, a huge amount on their law degree courses or their, their seats, as they call them, as they're, as they're training on the training contracts on wills and probate. But, you know, you're, you're in good hands there. They're regulated. You know, that's fine. Uh, the other thing to look for is someone who's Silex. So that's a chartered institute of legal executives. So they're always seen unfairly, I think, at times. It's like secondary to solicitors. And yet they do a lot of the work of, of the solicitor's practice. And so anybody with Silex, fantastic. So those are the three things to look for. If anybody has got anything else, you need to question it because they're the only truly sort of three areas of law in, in our field anyway, our state planning sector, where it's got real credibility. The problem you've got these days is... Facebook with £19.99 wheels and it's just a call centre or you've got things like uh, people who are very good on social media they've got great TikTok accounts they've got great websites look at me how clever I am if you do this in law we can do this for you you know so people buy into it because they assume they're lawyers and, and they're not you know I mean, we've we've employed Mags, our solicitor in house for coming up for ten years next, in next January. Uh, Morgan is TEP qualified. I'm TEP qualified, uh, and we know the advice we give is as as good as you can get, you know. And and if we don't know something, we'll bring in somebody who's TEP qualified or or somebody with real legal expertise in estate planning or tax planning because you want the best, don't you? So again, buy cheap, buy twice. So that there's there's a sector wide problem and. There are a number of firms like ours around the country who are going to talk about this in the public domain very soon because it's not right, you know, and the public need to know the difference. Uh, and they don't. So, you know, we've got people locally, people running around who have got no qualifications whatsoever, but they go to all these network meetings. They're professional will writers. Well, there's a contradiction in terms there, and it? it's like an oxymoron. You're professional. Oh, you're a will right, but where's your qualifications? And when you ask them, they get very uncomfortable. Oh, you don't need to. Oh, does that make it right? Does that make it right? Mm -hmm. You know, and, and we push, I write to the Lord Chancellor every now and again to say, why are you not addressing this? You know, Legal Services Board, they love to, to bring this in, that it becomes regulated. Uh, because I think the public need protection, don't they? Mm -hmm. You know, that's the thing. So that that's a, a weird area, weird area. Uh, 
And people who don't commit to professional qualifications, whatever you, whatever field you're in, there's something wrong there, isn't there? Something mm, yeah. wrong.